said before, if you guys take one thing away from this, like I took the next step away, just had advanced manual neck. I think it's awesome to have these small planks and everything. So I'm going to go over what we do with football. Started going to the summer development two program. First and foremost, I'd be probably remiss if I didn't talk about the people that have influenced me over the years. First is my wife, great supporter, but also with what she does in her career. She works with children with autism. And a lot of what she does as far as teaching children, I use as far as how I coach my guys. The basic example is I always talk about how our guys act up and got the kid that you're yelling at. And then the kids are doing good, maybe not paying so much attention to it. And she's always like, treat them like a dog. The dog barks. Don't answer. You keep always answering the barking dog. He's just going to bark for everything. Sometimes you got to ignore that dog. Guess what? The dog stops barking. Use it quite a few times. It's helped out. Ignore the bad behaviors because they just want attention. So, like I said, just go through the list real quick. Dr. Margaret Jones uh, gave me my TA spot up at uh, Springfield College. I asked an intern for Dwight Galt, who was a previous head strength coach at Maryland. I wanted to talk with him. My first experience in Division I weight room. Kevin Yoxel, uh, down at Auburn, same with Jason Lascalza. John Joseph was at Florida State. Chris Dawson, when I was at Kansas. Jerry Martin, when I was at UConn. I never worked with Chris Dole or for Chris Dole, but I learned a tremendous amount of information from him. He is, he, I will never know as much as he knows as far as being a coach. Buddy Morris, great mind, great, just has a lot of knowledge, but just simplifies it for everybody. Mark Tucker, Mike Berger, as far as Olympic lifting, and he's a guy that I just emailed one day out of blue and constant back and forth. To me, he's just a guy that wants to teach, and I never did anything for him. He just always responds. And then Adam Fly, young coach, I actually uh, coached him. He was a uh, player at Springfield College, but he's a great mind. He's in project and a great coach. Philosophy, real quick, I'd like to go over this just so you guys understand what our program is about with everything. Discipline and accountability, that's stems from head coach Randy Edson. You know, if a guy, like I said before, if a guy shows up and he's a second late, bye bye. You're not working out, show up on time, <coughs> shirt's tucked in, shoes are tied. Everything starts with us with discipline and accountability. Because we can't get things done if there's chaos all over the place. And our guys, when we first got there, hated it. They all know when they walk in the weight room, they grab a towel, the shirt's tucked in, the shoes are tied, they grab a roller, and they're ready to go. Takes care of a lot of problems. As far as how we progress our, our weight training, it's all linear, progressive overload. I can't stress enough that technique will increase your load. I don't care how much you lift if your technique is bad. If your technique is good, we'll put weight on the bar. All right? Functional multi joint training, basically the same we use free weights. Everything we do is standing. The only time our guys sit down is with their bench press. Everything else we stand. We military press, we're always standing. A lot of our core work is done standing. We don't do the basic crunches or leg raises. We'll do, we'll do hang leg raises, obviously, not standing. But we do a lot of our stuff standing on two feet. Why? They play football. They're always on their feet. They're never lying on their backs. Uh, our big point is you know, strength and ready force development. We work on both aspects, but strength is the key for what we have to do. To me, my opinion, strength is the foundation of everything. You want to be fast, you better be strong. Linear and line of speed development, um, combo training. Uh, Coach Doyle out of Iowa's kind of gone with more of this. And, uh, we're not going as much, but I'm delving into it a little bit. Where he actually does, if you think of football practice, linear speed development, lateral speed development, and condition all in one session. We're kind of just gravitating towards doing a main linear day with some lateral stuff added in towards the end. All right, so we're not going to actually add a condition aspect, but we've tried out the past two times and it's worked pretty good. We go for general for specific conditioning, recovery as far as nutrition, intervention, and sleep. Our basic philosophy begins by saying we're going to develop a player over three to five years. All right, we can't train everybody the same. Freshman coming in is not the same as a senior that's getting ready to leave that's been there for five years. Everybody in this room is basically different off genetics. Our right? have different parents. Got to train you a little bit differently. All right? Injury history. I may have blown both my knees out. Nothing wrong with them. Can't train me the same. I may not be fully healed even after two years. Training age. I had a kid that's never lifted weights before coming in as a true freshman this year. I can't just expect him to know what he's doing. We had a kid who will be a true junior next year. He's a huge power from back on. He's been trained since he was eight years old. Position they play, we don't train every position the same way. Yes, every squat, benches, and cleans, but other things outside of that, they do things different. Biggest thing I would say, you can't see because it's in red, we are training football players. We are training football players. I tell the recruits that 
We are not training to be Olympic lifters. We do Olympic lifts. We're not training to be powerlifters. We'll do some deadlift and we squat and we bench. And the guys do their curls, but we're not training to be bodybuilders, all right? We take all aspects of training and bring it together. Biggest thing for us is the posterior chain. For me, it's the engine for the game. If you want to be strong, you better be built from the backside. To me, the most powerful athletes are built on the backside. Um, Tom Cross, uh, a good Olympic lifting coach, said the front side's for the beats, the back side's for the uh, field. Needs analysis, what we look at in terms of taking, what we do, and what me and my staff do, we'll sit down and we write down a needs analysis as far as before we uh, develop a program. I think this is very important because there's a lot of stuff out there. You know, what do you need to specifically do? Obviously, increase total body strength and power, improve the ability to change direction, bend at the hips, knees, and ankles. You can't win with waist benders. Waist benders, I mean, you have athletes, when you tell them to squat, they do this. Got to be able to bend the hips, knees, and ankles. Full range of motion. Improve mobility and stability of joints. Very important. You want a strong athlete, you better close up his leaks. All right, be able to be mobile. Like I said, athletes need to be able to squat all the way down and squat all the way up. All right, can every athlete on our team do that? No, we have a kid that still squats like this. And that's as far as he can go. We still squat him, but he does other things to help increase his leg strength. We still got to squat him. It's football. Um, the athlete cannot move, they cannot play. If they can't move, they can't play. I don't, your strongest guy will sit on the sidelines if he can't move. Plain and simple. Improve core strength, we talk, for us, it's from their neck all the way down their hips. I can sit their neck part of their core, all the way through. The torso all the way down their hips. Balance is push and pulls. We do some type of pulling every day. And, that's, and, and I don't mean we do some type of barbell row or pull-ups, but we'll cheat and say we'll do a lot of band rows. And, you know, they said front on the floor between sets or stuff during our warm-ups. And then as far as conditioning, they have to be conditioned. If these guys go into camp, not in shape, I probably won't be there. Training practice, we for this going into the city summer. Build off strength gains from the winter to spring. We have to keep building off their strength gains. We, I talk about training smart. 89% range. I don't need to go over 90 for the summer for what I need to do. They're trained to be football players. Are all our heavy lifting over 90 is done in the winter. All right, if I get a guy hurt going over 90, like I said, I won't be there. The big three, power clean. I look at the power clean first in my program. It, to me, it's, it's the mothership of it all. The SWAT backs it up. I really don't care how much guy bench press. I'll never care. If you're telling me the bench press is your first thing you're going to look at when you go to the football or even athlete in general, not going to say you don't know what you're talking about, I'm just not going to agree with you. As far as I know, we work, we do it the last two weeks of training and prep for camp just to, just to teach these guys. It's not always about how much you lift, how fast can you apply that force, right? They, with this group or the belt level two guys, they go straight weight. They're not strong enough for combating resistance. They don't even touch, our, our guys don't touch chains to a two on the team card. And then our advanced guys just will start using bands, all right? Sometimes we keep them on chains until they get better with it. 55 to 65% percent range. And, you know, I'm not saying it's wrong with, you know, you know, there's programs out there where younger guys do chains and bands. You gotta have a strength foundation first. A lot of them aren't strong enough to use it. Uh, GPP, general physical preparation for the traditional place for conditioning. When we condition, we do a general type of condition all the way towards the end of something to where all our skill guys again, and our wide receivers and DBs are doing what they do on the field as far as conditioning, whereas our line they're doing different things. Like I talked about before, linear and lateral speed development, combo training, all our mechanics in terms of, you know, wall stuff, uh, arm action stuff, will all be done by week three. I did, I emphasized all that in the winter. I don't have time this summer to keep going over the same thing over and over again. Guess what? They are going to get bored. You've got to keep their interest level high. If you keep repeating the same stuff for a long time, you're not, you're not going to get what you want to get out of it. Top end speed with skill and hybrid. I know football, most guys don't reach top end speed, but my thinking is, if I need a guy to get the top speed twice in a game and he can't do it, we're not going to be successful. He has to be able to get to that level. Our line, we do not go do, we do not do top end speed that way. If I'm trying to run with the defensive line, we can make this game safe exactly we're in trouble. I don't know if we were at the CSCCDA uh, two weeks ago, get through the field pain. It doesn't have to be scientific all the time. Maybe we start thinking and reading all these books about this and that and what they did over in Russia and all this great stuff. Sometimes it's about getting to be mentally tough and feeling pain. That'll get it done. We evaluated at the end of summer by the vertical jump, 10 yard strength, short shuttle. So, ability to produce power and change direction. All our guys waiting for 
every workout. It allows the monitor to change in body weight and increase lean body mass and decrease fat mass, obviously. We also, uh, we will bob pod test our guys in the summer. We just were fortunate to hire our director of uh, nutrition, so she handles all that now, which is great. All our players must get recovery shape post workout, including our weight loss players. They are not going to continually gain more weight than they need because of the recovery shape. I have to get that in their head because they'll walk around with weight. They're going to gain all that weight when they eat the pizza at 2 a.m. in the morning. Recovery, we try to utilize cold tub as much as possible. And then if not, we tell them about conscious shower, they can do back in the dorm room or over in the locker room or wherever. We run a four-day split, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Three training times. I will lie, I'll tell you what, I'm jealous of the fact that you don't have class till uh, 1 o'clock. <laughs> That's probably awesome. Because right now, we're, we, it's all over the place sometimes. Our guys, and we may go this time, maybe that time, summertime even, but I would love to have that today. Three training times, two-hour blocks. So we'll, if it's, if it's a um, speed day, we go speed work first. Then we'll go to the weight room, it's conditioning day. We'll go uh, uh, weight room first day conditioning. Small groups to me equals better coaching. We may have 30 guys in the weight room. So I would like to get 25. You know, there's, there's three of us, including myself, plus two interns. Um, but like I said, I rather have small groups. We also have positional captain practices on Wednesday and Friday. Friday, we're just starting this summer. It's going to be at 6 to 7 a.m. Because we're one of our positional captains, and we need to get every guy there for seven, uh, uh, excuse me, 7 on 7 O line D line drills. So we're going to do that from 6 to 7. The team runs from 7 to 8, then we'll have good groups. Following that, Wednesday is also an optional workout to, to correct weaknesses. This is based on our schedule for Monday and Thursday. Pretty much very <coughs> as far as our warm up, combo speed, and lean areas, our main emphasis on Monday, line up on Thursday. We'll do that's all the field stuff. FMS corrective stuff before we start any type of lifting. We'll go Olympic lift, then we'll do some lower body push on both days. You know, we do double work and single leg -like work. Upper body pull, vertical pull, or horizontal pull, vertical you know, pull up for a barbell row, torso work, and our post static stretch. And this is Tuesday, like I said, we'll be in the weight room first. We'll warm up. High injury corrective. And high injury corrective is just basically if you're a guy or guys that are pre split had pulled their hands through multiple times, let them do more corrective work for that before we can start our lifting. Just because it's important because nine times out of ten is going to pull it again. Alright, for guys that had to guys, he's on his third shoulder surgery. Rush your shoulder work with him. Uh, we do our Olympic work, upper body push, double, you know, we do some type of alternating pressing, uh, lower body knee flexion, you know, you think of like a full boot hand, hip extension to me as an RDL, torso, talk about our DVP position, position, and push that stretch. Try is a little different, like I said, because of the sketch we're going to utilize. This is based on our warm up on the field or even in the weight room. Every day we do some type of PVC pipe roll. We don't use foam rolls, we use PVC pipe rolls. It's, it's, Stiffer, it's not going to you know, break down over time, look at it from cost effective, and also it's going to hurt a little bit more. All right, get a little bit more cheap inside. I tell the guys to cheap inside. The best thing about it is when we first got there, they felt it was the dumbest idea I ever came up with. Now, guys are coming on their own and you know, do it. And also, if I take it out, if I start eliminating things because I need more time to do something else, well, why are we doing this? Why are we rolling this? Why can't we do this? They'll find a way to get it done. So it'll, it'll work itself in. You just got to get it in there. As far as mobility on the field, Slow tempo dynamics to me is quad pull, hamstring kicks, figure, you know, figure four spider stretch. Or we utilize hurdles, you know, everybody's done hurdle drills. We'll do some type of CNS simulation. For me, that's form run, run mechanics, A skip, hamstring kick, kick skip, carryover, whatever it is you're going to do for the day. And then we'll emphasize it more some speed ladder work or uh, micro hurdle work. For me, the micros are real small ones, the major and next ones up. If we're doing a weight room, we do some type of mobility work with a stick. I think that's very important, putting something in their hands just to get them to move with an object. All right, so you realize, you know, this kid may have recruited real high to do what he's supposed to do on Saturday, but he freaking can't do a single leg RDL with a stick hanging on his back and stay tight because he has a lot of weeks in the bike. So he's a good athlete, he's just not very mobile or structurally sound. Play, you some type of play warm with a 45 pound plate or a 25 pound plate. We'll do band activation work. I'm um, just going to assess the nervous system, fire a little higher, and I see the higher injury correction work. And then neck, neck's very important. We always do neck <coughs> four days a week. Um, we do some manual stuff. I am going to steal your, stuff, your guys' stuff that you went over today. We'll do some type of struggling work as far as neck. Biggest thing as far as we do plyometrics, all right? You, get, you tell guys, jump. They just jump. You got to tell them to be explosive. You got to co-set it because, like I said, on Saturday, they know how to jump. 
You tell them to jump over hurdles, all of a sudden their arms are flying everywhere. Teach them how to use their arms and land soft, all right? Athletic base. And I won't allow the line on the field, so maybe I'm jaded to it a little bit more as far as how bad they are to jumpers, but they, they'll jump very unathletically, all right? Helps them develop eccentric strength until they're being able to land soft in a good football athletic base position, all right? For us, for me, 9 to 12 total jumps in a session. All right, that's the most we do. Why? Because we do a lot of we do a lot of Olympic lifting in the weight room. I can't ask to be exposed to that here if you're going through speed work all this stuff and then say, oh well, you got to be exposed to the weight room now you're moving move the weight around. Drills, if we, as far as plows, we'll do hurdle hops, probably a big stable loss. We'll start the first week. We'll do a little jump over the hurdle and we'll stick up to each one. Just to emphasize good eccentric landing, good body based body awareness, and just stand back up, jump over to the next one. Next week, we'll do a double bounce in between. Then jump for the next one, double bounce, then jump. Next one continuous, our skill and hybrid will get up to single leg pops, going forward, sometimes we'll have to change direction, never a line, all right? Never, it's not gonna, I'm not gonna get out of what I want them to get out of, but our skill and hybrid will. And then we'll do some type of continuous hops where they have to sprint out. He, when our coach is standing here, if he doesn't give it a uh, command, they go forward, it goes up, right, goes up, they, they go live and all that. Broad jump, same progression, stick, to continuous, to resist it. So now I got, I got a tubing behind me connected to my partner, so now I got to jump out, stick the landing, stand up, jump out, stick the landing, stand up. Sometimes we do a med ball with a line where they have to hear, jump, explode out, release the med ball as they land, get into a sprint for 10 yards. Get them to do two things at one time, and then just jump, jump, jump to a sprint. As far as our speed mechanics, our big thing is you have to set the towel, for linear and lateral. You know, we've, everybody's heard this before as far as posture, arm action, leg action. For us, there's no specific drill for posture. You, you know, you got to just have to re emphasize it through your mechanics and through your work you got to work you do on the field. Arm action, we'll start with seated. One drill is done per week. So week one, seated. Week two, half kneeling. Week three, standing. All right? Some people stay seated all the time. Some people do kneeling all the time. I like to just put them in different body positions just to get them to do different things. Two sets of five seconds, 50 to 100 percent, and I put technique down below because if you got a guy going 100 percent, he's all over the place. He's probably even better at 70 percent. This is good for us. We emphasize cheek to cheek. All right, I tell him violent cheek to cheek, elbows in tight. Lay action, one drill for a week, which we start with switch, and I'll just, I'll just use this. Prowlers, we don't we don't have access to the wall, but here I'll just use this to so teach them good body lean here, chest tall, core tight. Alright, so we'll start with right leg up, and we're gonna say switch all over the first good, knee up tall, chest tall, drive down. Alright? If we see any of this, we just tell them and some guys are doing this. This is how slow they have to go to get good mechanics in. Alright? As far as a double, you know, guy with a double, he would go switch, boom, boom. A triple is just boom, boom, boom. All right, two sets of five each leg. That's all for our linear action work. As far as lateral action work, still talking about push and move. We are stronger pushers than we are pullers. We have to teach our guys that. They all want to do, I just call it the basketball style, where they open their foot up like this and they do this. We want our guys toes straight ahead where they are pushing across. Push, push. They should be pushing with that trail leg. Athletic base, feet underneath their hips, never lose their base. Feet should never click or cross over. We have to emphasize that a lot. Like I said, you ask them to do it in their field of play, they are much better at it than when you actually ask them to do it in a drill. Um, low center of gravity, like I talked before, flex the hips, knees, and ankles, more stay stable. Our, we want guys that can bend at their hips, their knees, and their ankles. Stay up on the ball feet. This is not good for us. Drill that we use, um, it comes from Mike Ball, and, 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 and I, I apologize if he was the first one that started, but that's where I knew I learned it from. It's a one-two stick drill, and it leads into a one-two cup, we'll do two sets of five of that, and then we'll do some type of single leg mini hurdle hop, we'll just be hopping down on a mini hurdle off. Think about hopping, if I'm going this direction, I'm hopping off my trail leg because I have to push, all right? I don't want to hop on my knee leg. <coughs> Speed drills that we utilize. For us, we do weighted prowler drives, all right? Our line will be 350 pounds on the prowler, hybrid 300. Uh, it's going to 
last 250, the weight decreases by 50 pounds each week because of training. Volume is increasing, also damage is increasing on your body. So I start decreasing weight. We usually stay on that for about three weeks. Four sets of 10 yards on that. Our line will do six yards for that because our scale and hybrid are good build ups following that. So our line will do more sometimes. I didn't work with eight, but all they emphasize is that if you've seen a proud one before, they're up on the proud, they are driving. I'm just worried about the leg drive. I'm not worried about the upper body. Two and over arm, action mechanics, everything before that. Leg drive, I'm worried. How fast can they drive on the ground? And for alignment, it's not how they're off the line. It's coach teach them. I want them to run as if they're sprinting, because that's going to work on script again. Not teaching them how to be an offensive line. Uh, like I said, our skill and hybrid do build ups. As far as we're going to build up, so at 20 yards, you have to be a full, hold for 10, and celebrate for 20. All right, I, I'm huge on telling them how far I want them to slow down, because if you don't, and you say, run, if this is the 40 yard line, or the 40, we'll stop just like this, and walk back next to you, know, guys, you want to see them. So I'm huge on giving them at least 20 yards to slow down. And then we go to what's called inside extra, as far as they change direction, we go for that day. Short shot, if we go, if this would be a Thursday, we do, uh, we, we call it progenitor, whatever you want to call it. We do it to the right twice, because that's the way we test it. All right, 5, 10, 5. We go to a triangle drill, that change direction. <coughs> Next one's in, in and out, just work on acceleration. So some people, for me, I start where I accelerate the first 10, jog the next 10, re, re accelerate again, the next 10, jog, re accelerate, and have to slow down. Some people start jog, accelerate, jog, accelerate, and so on and so forth. And then the same leg, knee on lateral start, I think it's a good drill. All right, teach these guys. I'll go in this direction, they have to be here, they have to be they have to be able to drive out and get in a straight line. And it's, it's pretty comical that the guys keep, don't have the strength or, or flexibility or ability to drive out back and straight, where they end up stepping here. And I keep pretty much close together so they can realize, oh, I just stepped on so-and-so. Teach them to drive right in a straight line. All right, as far as our GPP work, what we do, We'll have a set of three stations, all right? First station is still about to start a barbell complex where we'll do, check out 10 bars lined up on the side on, on the field, all right, they have 95 pounds on the bar. They'll do a hand clean pull, five reps, so a hand clean pull. As they guide that is higher, he's three quarters feet across the field, touches the line, jogs back. His partner's going, so his partner could be running as he's jogging back. As soon as he gets back, he does 10 push ups, it's continuous. All the skill guys are doing, the coaches coaching through, all the coaches saying, next one, you know, next one you squat the press. So everybody's doing it. Originally, this was started when they would walk back just to give them more rest. They chose they want to jog back just as far as recovery. They said, just let's can we just jog back? And I said, that's fine with me. Next group is partner sledgehammer on the tires. We've got tires lined up, 10 sledgehammers out. All it is, so me and him are going. And I could be going feet together, right hand on top, hands at the end of the straight up and down. Teach them how to bend, not this. They gotta bring it above their head, keep the core there, and slam it down. Bend, bend. I do my 15 hand to him, he does his, my rest is when he's gone. Then we're back on. They are going back and forth, and the coaches tell us. So they may go lateral. So we're facing here. Slides coming over. Lateral. They may go lateral, and it comes down with one hand, gotta bring it back into one hand. So we constantly change up, change their feet, we'll stagger the feet. It's just to keep them moving continuously. And then the last thing, the line will be starting on the far walks. Uh, with sandbags, 100 pounds in the sand his hand, they just walk it 20 yards, so I walk it down, partner brings it back, partner brings it back to me, my rest is when they're going, it's continuous, everybody rolls through, it's a good time for them. We go to our general uh, conditioning, it's a team Temple run, very similar to what, what uh, the coaches from Temple do, just done a little bit differently, and it was, it was, it was one of the same concept, and I got it from Chris Dawson, so maybe he got it from Texas as well, it's the way he does it. Um, I give them 25 total seconds as a team for each rep. So skill, it, it could start skill guys first, maybe high, hybrid second, lineman third. Sometimes the lineman got to start first. Skill second, hybrid's the last group that goes. The same concept. Guys are down. Let's say the lineman go first. The guys are really want to run hard. So the last guy crosses in 10 seconds and he is gone. The skill and hybrid got to make, got to get both their runs done in 15. So it's the same concept that like he said. Last guy crosses, whistle goes, hybrid goes. Last hybrid crosses, whistle goes, skill guys goes. It's to put emphasis on them to be accountable as a team. And the funny thing was, a guy that never has made every rep in condition, one of our defensive tackles, we did it this way the first day, he made every rep. Nothing changed. 
So the fact that we brought together says, you're going to run as a team, and we're all going to fail. So he made it. Him and I talked about it. He said, yeah. I said, well, if you don't want to let your team down, do what we do with both players. But we're probably going to stick this one. I think it's a great, great idea. Our guys will jog back. So if I'm a lineman and we ran first, they got to touch. At, they'll do 50 yard distance. Touch. They're in rest. They are jogging. They are jogging. Just to get a low level, more conditioning effect from them. As far as just trying to build that base on them when we go to specific stuff. We'll do that. So that's one set. So let's say it's their first quarter. So let's say we do eight reps of that. They'll get about a minute, 30, two minute break. Crowds are already lined up. They partner up with threes. On the other uh, line, they have 200 pounds on. Um, uh, excuse me, hybrids at 170, skill guys at 140. The weight is just based off. That's the same weight they got to pull when they um, when they have to do their six game punch when they get in trouble. That's that's how we. That's where I got that, those weight numbers from. Um, skill guys push 15 yards. So up on the prowler, up on the lineman, muscle goes, they got to push through 10 yards. I'm pushing too high. Prowler does not turn around. My partner's got to push the same way back to low. Let's say we got eight reps. So I got to push my first four high. He pushes his first four low. But we can walk back there. We got to do. But I just know one thing. Most guys aren't going to say, oh, I'll do all eight reps low while you go all eight reps high. There's a big difference when you push the prowler. That'll be quarter number two. Quarter number three. We go back to team tempo run, core number four, we go back to power push. We'll work, the worst thing we ever had was tw uh, four quarters, 12 reps each quarter. Uh, probably I went as low as on the tempo run as far as probably rest time 35 seconds when they're jogging back. And then I always keep power push at 30 seconds just because they're doing a weight push. Um, as far as these position specific plays, each play, each um, day, there's a total number of plays we utilize. 30 to 45 plays. The way, I, the way I came about that was a given um, scrimmage, Coach Edson may run 120 plays. Well, I'm figuring, well, the guy's not running 120 plays. Yet. Let's say he's running probably 40 to 50 because our ones may run a little more. So I don't have to go that high. So I may, I may run 35 to 45 plays based on the fact that we probably run about 120 in scrimmage. Sometimes we may run 100. Plus, we've got seven seconds of work on, 35 seconds off. So let's say it could just be a short shuttle drill. So all the line and line up. It's based on what they do. They got to move in a short change of direction. Their hands are down. Set, go. Touch, go five. Come back ten. Finish through. As soon as the, as soon as the first guy, first guy, not the last guy. As soon as the first guy finishes, rest starts. They're going. They're standing. They're waiting, waiting. I'm going right again. We may do that for ten plays. They got 25 plays left. Let's say we're doing 35 plays for that day. We go through, that's quarter number one, um, as far as that goes. Then we'll do a different drill. So these are all the different drills we may do as far as our skill and high grade. We'll do a long shuttle, or our line will never do. We'll go short shuttle, we'll do heavy light like power pushes. Our line will do tire flips. Uh, so our hybrids, agile bag work, call work, and arrows work. Whatever kind of drills you can think of to run plays is the best thing to do. For me, it's to say, okay, what do I need to do for an offensive line, or a defense line? Well, don't need to do long shuttle. We're not running that much distance when they're playing the game. We're going to do short shuttle. We're going to do heavy leg crowd. We're going to do tire flip. And that's all we're going to do for the maybe the 45 plays we're going to do for that day. I don't need to do everything we throw down. We don't have to do farmer walks. Sometimes we never do farmer walks all summer. All right, it's just to say, what do I want to do? Why? Because the lineman has to move or resist movement while he's on the field. All right, skill guy, yeah, they're hitting contact and everything, but they're not moving things like linemen are moving on the field. They really don't need to flip tires. They'll do lighter crowd push, but they need to be able to move in space. This allows them to be ready, in my opinion, for camp. All right? It allows them to be better at what they do. Um, I'm heading over talking about the weight room as far as what we do. Uh, you know, just for sexual nervous system development as far as explosive movements. You know, working as far as acceleration speed flows to move. As far as we do some five matches, we'll do five matches in the weight room as well. Uh, box jumps. Tower thing, I said before, tower thing is, is a big one for me. Tower snacks, my next year. Those are just supplemental lifts that we do just for speed work. Nothing else. All right, for me, and then Coach Todd, you probably know more about this than me, and, and, and this is what I was told, so correct me if I'm wrong. A little, to me, a little bit is a sport in itself, but the pattern involves about probably 60 to 25 hours per week, would you say? That's a lot of time to me, to be good at what you got to be good at. A football player loves eight hours a week. For us, it's approximately one hour to limit the movements. But we're telling them they got to get good at it. 
But maybe you're, you know, and I made for me, I made a mistake early on in my career to say, well, I want to be good at the power clean, but we're only power clean one time a week. But I wanted to be good at it. But they squatted twice a week, or they bench twice a week. But I wanted to be good at the power clean. So I have readjusted a lot of things in my thinking. Uh, for me, the power clean, speed, strength, movement, training, two times a week. Like I said before, the power snatch, body neck jerk, or supplemental movements. I don't care what they ever max out on those two. They'll never max on those. It's just for speed. It's just something for another explosive movement to do. I like to pull from the floor to act in the glutes, hamstrings, and low back. To me, I want, I want them to pull a heavy load with good form because they have to move something on the field. It's highly coordinated movement, mobility, stability under high tension. All right? You can, we, our best power cleaners, one of our best power cleaners right now is a running back who weighs 190 pounds. When we have defensive linemen, our heaviest team lineman weighs 315 pounds. He's probably about 40 pounds off what this kid can power clean. Why? Because the kid, kid, the kid has great technique and he's mobile and knows how to pull himself up. He's very explosive where this team lineman thinks, oh, I'm just a strong guy. I can't, you know, this guy, this and that. And tries to get him to pull the same weight. And guess what? He got knocked back on his ass. This is during testing. So now we're starting to see the things that we're asking to do as far as being mobile and, and, and let's say, st uh, have stability within their lift is very important. For me, it's the best development of power for football players. Why football is a collegiate sport? All right, I, I, I've seen coaches that say, well, we're not going to win the lift because you can get the same thing from sprinting or med balls or anything. And, and, and I listen. But then to me, it just didn't make sense because football is a collegiate sport. i got to move something. So I need to move next turn a little bit because I'm trying to move him on the field. So I gotta be exposed, so I gotta be exposed with him. So I just, for me, I put the two of the guys and said, that's what I wanna do. For us, we teach uh, grip stance posture first. And it, it, you know, we start from the hand. We'll teach about a shrug, an RDL, to an RDL shrug, hand clean pull, then to a hand clean. I got rid of the hand clean high pull. Coach Tyler, for, for us, our guys are good pullers, so they end up pulling the bar here and just catch it like that. I want them to teach to pull themselves underneath the bar to bend. So when they start getting their heavy load, they got to catch here and stand up versus trying to do this. And say, is that good, coach? I'm like, no, that's pretty bad. So all our guys, when they test, they're on their platform. If their feet hit any of the black areas, their platform's probably about that wide, where they got to land at, any black area, rep doesn't count. They got to be able to catch under control and stand up to the bar. So if they catch like this, no good lift. We've had some guys who catch probably a good amount of weight like this, but an offensive lineman's like this on the field, he's probably getting his ass kicked. He's back and back defensive lineman, he's just bull rushing the hell out of him. He can't stop anything. He can stop something like this. Uh, front squat, a big thrust, we teach our guys to front squats first just to re-exercise and catch for the clean. And then power clean as far as this is from, um, so I'm going to just teach our guys and they walk up to the bar. I, for me, I taught it before was shins are always touching the bar. He's like, no, no. Their toes are underneath the bar. So there's space to me in the bar now, so to speak. When they, he says, tell them to squat. Squat down to the bar. So now they decrease the distance. They're getting, they have to have good ankle mobility to squat to the bar. Tighten that back up. For me, it's the three simplest commands I could ever give a kid to teach them how to power come back. We'll spend in the offseason the first two weeks, every rep, toes, squat, back. Hit the whistle, they pull. They drop, three set, toes, squat, back. And that's all we're doing for five sets of three. Re-emphasize what I'm going on week six. All the guys are doing is they, they, do, they repeat on their own, so I don't have to do it. Uh, as far as low body strength and all the training, the squat. It's, another strength. it's our strength movement, training twice a week. For me, it's the greatest muscle mass, huge hormone release. I got to get these guys bigger and stronger. I got to release those hormones. The squat will take care of that. Like I said before, the front squat is tall first, enforce good posture, enforce ability, reinforce the catch for the power clean. We squat in parallel, you know, and, and that's just what we do. Hip joint to knee joint, all right? Got to squat through full range of motion, all right? Got to keep the knee joint strong. Posterior chain development, all right? Lean body mass, and to me, the most important is safety. I can squat a lot of weight quarter squat, all right? Probably going to get hurt. Full range of motion, yeah, I'm squatting a little less weight. In the beginning, but I'll get stronger through range of motion over time. Like I said, the front squat, the way we do is a front squat, which is an assisted movement off the back squat. We'll teach them how to box squat just because we want them to get, sit their hip back and feel what it's like to get power with the stable surface underneath them. Then they'll go right into squat. 
As far as the post there, chin, like I said before, it's an anchor for strength and power. The biggest thing for us is teach our guys how to move at their hips. Everything is about their hips. Um, assistance movement, like I said, squatting is, is, uh, power is crucial for the post your chin development. We'll do RDL, we do full boot hands. Uh, sumo deadlift just introduced it this winter. Uh, watched the webinar on Louis Simmons just talking about posterior chain development. They talked about the sumo deadlift, and, and he had great results and great strength gains off of that. And he talked about doing it for strength, you know, with heavy weight, and then from the speed aspect of the move, we'll have our guys make that 50% of the bar and pull just for speed reps. Reset, pull for speed. But they always got to reset every time they do it. Two dumbbells in their hands, seem like already out, and we'll do a band reverse type of which we connect to our um, glute hands within our warm up, which I think is a very uh, another good exercise. Single leg movements, I think, is very, 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 very important, but neglected a lot of times. You know, it uh, reinforces hip strength, mobility, and stability. Again, we're training athletes, all right? Field movements are done one leg at a time. When you run, one leg is only on the ground, find the force. That's what I'm Our movements for that are reverse lunges, Bulgarian squats, single leg squats, single leg RDL. So it's a bit of a leg curl. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure why that is, but I thought it is. Upper body strength development. Bench, like I said, I don't quite really want to do that because, like I said, for me, I could care less. Bench is for, for when, when, when you know, everybody walks in, how much bench, man. Nobody asks how much power curl, how much is talking is important to me in football. But everybody says, how much is bench? So, uh, develop upper body strength, assistant movements we do off the bench first, a close grip military, always standing, often lockout bench, so guys that have a bench, hand, and both arms are up, brings one down, has to finish the press before he brings the other one down, it's not this, this is cheating to me, has to show good st shoulder stability in this off shoulder while he's pressing, good core stability, you know he's like, he has to have a strong core, not to rotate, and then we have a number two, which is just two notches up, or number three dumbbells in final, because I don't know Pulling is very, very important. Develops poster, shoulder, shoulder strength. It's very underdeveloped in our incoming freshmen. Big one, backside from top to bottom is very underdeveloped in a lot of freshmen we get. To me, your strongest pull is your strongest pressure. <coughs> Guys that can pull a lot of weight can press a lot of weight. Sister movements, huge on pull ups, chin ups, barbell row. I love the barbell row personally, but our guys are horrible. Like, why they have poor core strength? Because you got to think about why can bench press. This, I'm on a stable surface. When I got a barbell in a row, I got to have a strong core because I got to pull away because this is, this is how we have a stable surface. So, guys are very good at it, but for us to be good at it, we got to just do it. So, we do utilize it. Single arm dumbbell row, they are good at that. We do that on something. And then we do a lot of glass strap and murder rows. I love the glass straps. Uh, dynamic effort. Not, not a huge state of program, but we do utilize in our movement. You know, it's an important cruise rate of force about speed of applying of force. To me, strength is the foundation for your speed and tech. People, that, you know, these kids just get out there and say, oh, no, you have to have the intent to move something fast, the intent to hit it. These people talk about this, and, and I think this cracks me up a little bit. They say, well, the acceleration at the top of the movement is a huge factor. Yeah, there's acceleration in sport, too. <clears throat> Are you just not going to do it because there's, there's supposedly something from, oh, I got to decelerate the weight so it slows things. There's something wrong with everything I look at. How are you going to get better? Don't look at what the issues are. The combination of this, like I said, these guys are only machines and bands. They're not strong enough because it's an added resistance throughout the range of motion. Uh, as far as how I set things up for the power team, we'll do three to, three to six working sets. Now, they may do two or three warm sets before that, but they'll have three to six working sets of two to three reps on a heavy day. All right, and I probably should say one to three because if you go up to six, so they'll be single. All working sets of 80-90% of a 1RM. Alright, so they, if they hit a 90, it's probably for two singles, then we'll drop back down and maybe hit like an 85 or 83. On their medium light day, three to, work, three to four working sets of two to three reps, 75 to 82 percent range. So we'll clean on we'll clean light on Monday, because that's our heavy squat day, and then we'll heavy clean on Thursday because then we front squat. So inherently the front squat is going to be a lighter squat. Like I said before, power slants, nine neck jerk or sub movements, train for speed for me. 75 to 85% of water rounds. We'll go up to a 90 in the winter to get a number, but that's about it. Otherwise not, they're, they're just there to help out. Squat and bench, pretty much the program the same. Three to five working sets of three to six reps on a heavy day. Um, all working sets are 80 to 90% of water rounds. When we hit a three, that's from one set at 90%. That's it, then they drop right back down. That may be our test. The way we test, which I, I we don't, Using the Nebraska formula or the other formulas, the way we test, and this is stolen from Coach Doyle at Iowa. 
Ninety percent, guy can get a three. All right. If he gets four, he'll get a one percent bump on his max. If he gets five, he gets a two percent bump. It allows us to bump guys and form them rather than typing in this formula. And all of a sudden, I got freaking fifteen guys that bench press four hundred pounds. So I try to work them off that max. They can't do work. So for us, we do percentage bumps, and we've been doing it the past few years, and it's worked out great. And then I'll put in the grass form and say, oh, he did this way for six reps. Wow, 50 pound difference. I know for a fact this guy can't squat 400 pounds. He's 350 squatter, so it's a lot of times to adjust to max. And we'll continually bump guys, not just going to test it. If a guy's killing his weight, and he needs a heavier max, we'll adjust it. We're not going to go crazy jump. But most guys with this way are saying, take it to 90%, say, okay, you have to get three. And everything over that is going to help you out. Because most guys are done at five or six. Our strong guys will get four. A guy that's been our program for five years will probably only get four. And that, that's good for him. Because you know what? Long time in the program, he's not going to see the same amount of gains as a true freshman coming in who just put 80 pounds on a squat from you know, January all the way to the start of uh, camp. Uh, we did one day, we go to uh, 60, 80% range of 1RM. Dynamic back to movement, squat and bench. He sets, he works sets two for the squat, three, uh, three for the bench. That's the percentage rate, we just mark 55 to 65%. We train, it's train for speed. How fast can they move? If a guy has a weight on the bar and it's not moving fast, guess what? I take weight off. Well, coach, you're not moving it fast. Uh, we're, not, we're not going for, we're not going for strength. How fast can you move the bar? This is smooth, basically we're all done with three or four workouts at the five day rest. On the, on the any day, all working sets are 65 to 85% of the range. We don't do more sets as far as um, our sis moves. So we go from, we just squat it, and then the next thing they got is a Bulgarian. Their first set of Bulgarian is their first working set. For me, when I first got it out, I used to use, use this um, progression. I think it's the simplest one as far as progressing it without making mistakes and trying to say, Oh, I just read this article on Russian training, so they did it, blah, blah, blah. It's just base weight, low, low, deloaded, you're going to repeat, but if you're going to performance, base, low, low performance, to me, the simplest format. Sometimes I think we outthink ourselves and try to do this great program, next thing you know, we're bombing in the middle of it. It's, it's so simple sometimes. If you apply stress just enough, it'll get stronger. Uh, just something as far as applying, I try to keep in mind, keep it simple, smart. Teach what you know. If you don't know what the boom is, don't teach them. You, know, you, got, you got a man here that knows a lot more about him than me. See guys' knowledge. That's why I put these Be a sponge of knowledge. That's why I'm here. I'm trying to learn, even if I take away five things from this place, I got smart. Sound program, repair your leaks. You want strong athletes, close their leaks up. They're weak because of their <coughs> leaks. If you want a guy to be a better squatter, but he has a weak core, but you say, oh, I got to put more weight on the bar to get a better squatter. Not even a stronger core, but a better squatter. Coach the technique, not the weight. You know, Louis Simmons says strength is developed over time, not with weight. Everybody, you all want to understand, my freshman got to be, the coach wants to be as strong as a senior. And, the, you know, the, the freshman high school needs to be as strong as a senior high school. But it's not going to happen. Coach the technique, not the weight. Uh, some Blaine Marks always said, and probably still does, players' bodies are constantly talking to you. Are you listening to them? They're telling you all the information you need to know to be a better coach. But are you just sitting there? Got more minutes for you? Try to see how can I get this program better. Uh, equipment limitations, because you know, for us, we, when we redid our way we got to, we had some limitations because it didn't fit to what we wanted to do or what I wanted to do. File variations, squatting variations, single, double, like goblet squats, whatever. Push up variations. Guys want to bench 400 pounds, they can't freaking do freaking 15 push ups. But they want to bench press 400 pounds. It, it amazes me. Pulling variations, how poor athletes are at it pulling. Pull up, full range, inverted rows, dumbbell wrong. It, it's, it's just amazing. You just, you know, you know, and they attempt a lot of man resistance stuff. Use your players. You got all of them. I made a mistake when I first got there. Like we were doing um, a pendulum net, and all the coaches were doing there. We got, we got 30 guys standing around. I said, like, what am I doing? I'm getting tired. They can help each other and partner up. They can't mess this up. Utilize them for that. And design and training program that best fits your needs. All right, everything I talked about isn't going to fit everybody's needs in here. You know, everything we need to do at Temple is not going to fit what we need to do. It's my our program is based on what the head coach needs. These guys will be able to do come Saturday. The quote we have in our weight room, I think, I, I think it's awesome. I'm going to put a version. Comfort is the difference between the way things are and the way they expect them to be. 
comforted in the room and is not a present and a loving here. And Chris Dawson at Kansas used to always say to his guys, and, and I thought it was great, get them comfortable being uncomfortable. Who really wants to go out? Let's be all of the training and everything, but who really wants to go out there and run, you know, 10 one 10 or whatever? You got to get them comfortable, get them better at doing that. Uh, this is rapid, so they call out Thank you. There's my contact information. Um, as far as that, I appreciate you guys listening. Are there any questions regarding anything? So you feel the guy who's got a wrist injury. What do you do? And I really can't catch the ball. How do you work around that? Power and things like that? If we have, we have a player right now. He actually uh, broke his arm when he was little, so his, his arm's bowed, so he can't catch it clean. He doesn't. Uh, he doesn't clean. He'll, he'll dumbbell snatch. We'll do uh, box jumps with him. For me, he's not an Olympic lifter. He, he was brought here, he's actually a kicker. He was brought here to kick. He's got to be explosive to do that. So we'll, we'll get him exposed to doing other things as far as that But for him, for me to say, oh, catch it clean, he can't. He can't it even buy when he goes over ahead and catch his snacks. So because his arm's pretty bowed out. Like, you were like, what happened to your arm? Like, we had a kid, and he just told us the other day, uh, Brad right got done testing, because he would always stand, and they're not out of the number, but he always do this kind of Edison squat. So I'm like, why do you keep bending over? He's like, what do you mean? Like, he always do this every day. He goes, oh, I got scoliosis. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah. So I looked at his back, and you can see it. I was like, you're done squatting. And you know, no, and he, and this is a kid that trains hard. He wants to squat. But for me to ask him to do that when he needs to do it, he's going to feel it to me is wrong. It's, it's just going to lead to more injury. But he's a strong, tough kid that wants to do it. So it's always to me about what can he do. You know, I don't need him to power him. The majority of the time, most of your guys are going to power Else? You're the PVC you use the same like diameter as those foam rollers you are. Yeah, I want to say it's um I don't know. It's it's well, it's, it's, it's pretty yeah, it, it's it's pretty big, yeah. It's a big one. We just got them going deep with 10 foot sessions, like right, exactly. cut them all down, maybe four of them. It's cheap. I'll have a four of them. Okay, we just also. Yeah, it, it, to me, we haven't replaced them yet three years, and where to me the the whatever else touching me at it is just gonna break down. They have their own group. So one of one of the uh, full time coaches. So let's say our, our upper class will, are running first that day. Those guys are in the way. Why? Because those upper class had some years and two weeks on for that summer. So they're doing completely different things. We test them all in. And I just say, we're going to get a number for you on squat. We're going to get a number for you on bench. We don't test on power clean. We go pull up, uh, full glute hand. And uh, behind the neck jerk, just to get numbers. But it's based on if a guy starts squatting really bad, I stop him. So I, he, I may have undershot his max if he had good technique by 100 pounds, but I'm not going to sit there and let him do that because I got to teach my squat. And all these kids, I tell them, no disrespect to who's your, who's your coach, but I'm going to tell you what I want you to get done because at the end of the day, if you get hurt in my watch, I got to go upstairs and answer to him. He ain't going to go back to your high school coach and say, well, why did you teach my squat that way? It's not really one of the squats. So it's the developmental one is baby. Probably for the summer when they go, uh, most of them on one guys don't play, you know. So then it starts ramping up where they get thrown a lot. Of and, and when for me, the way I need things done, our younger guys uh, after our first season there were actually better at doing things what I wanted to get done versus our older guys. It's just retraining by a new program. I'm not saying he was done wrong in the past because it wasn't, but just how we need to get things done as far as things. When you do your dynamic effort. Do you have a tendon unit or anything that you make? We don't have right tendon unit right now, and that's what I hate the most about. So it's a lot of, and that's the next big purchase coming. Um, but it, it, it'd be awesome to have, but I still think you still got to preach oh, yeah. speed, 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 because they just, well, I don't care about that number. You know, I mean, you get all these kids that some of them love lifting, and, and we, have a, we have a good majority of our kids. They are, we do meatheads, but they understand what the weight room does for them. You know, you get a, you know, we had a kid like a receiver, he hated whatever. He's probably one of our strongest, most supposed to guys. You know, he got he, his vert, he, when he got there, he's a receiver 35, he's at like 38 and a half right now. He loves to squat, loves to clean. He's like, I hate this place, but you know what? I love what this place does for me. So to me, it's, it's if I can just get results, that's better than a 10 unit. But yeah, trust me, I, I wish we had it, because I hate yelling speed, speed, speed. speed. Two things, one comment, one question. Uh, comment on the earlier question about the 
if someone can't receive bar properly. There's two reasons why, you, two major reasons why you do cleans to begin with. One is because the explosiveness you get, you get out of the triple extension of the hips and knees, that's what sport's all about. And the second benefit is receiving the bar. Now you work in core even more, you work in deceleration. A lot of injuries happen on the field because of deceleration in, uh, issues. So that teaches that. So if they can't receive it, at least they can do the pulling motions and still get that, uh, that triple extension and that explosiveness. Ideally, if they can catch it, then, then they get both benefits. The question I had was uh, on the power sash. Mm -hmm. You said that uh, you work off the uh, in the uh, jerk behind the neck. Uh, you work off of seventy-five to eighty percent of a one rep max. Do you test the power snatch? We'll test it too with, with a three hour. The way we test our Olympic movements is, is we don't do a one rep. Yeah, and okay. for us, you test the three rep max for the uh, snatch. Yeah, so basically, what it'll be is it's actually three to five. I'll take ninety percent, and they got to do. Clean. So let's say five guys are lined up. Those same five guys are going, and they got to do a clean every minute. For me, it's about yeah, it makes a long recovery to get on the field, but they got to be exposed repeatedly. I don't want to take them to one arm just because they're not good Olympic lifters at the end of the day, and it's just a, it's more of a safety issue. I said, well, if I have to give them some repeated at a high and higher intensity with a minimum amount of rest that you guys would take, and they can do it, they probably it's done the same way. So if they get four reps of one percent bump, two rep, two five reps, two percent bump. But that's very I would say it's very conservative in terms of how we bump them. That's a good way to do it. I, I, just, I just don't think they're ever going to be as good as what you guys do. Well, there's, you know, when you're, you know, I do this all the time. I work with weightlifters, and our main goal was to put as much weight over their head for one rep. That's what the competition is. Mm -hmm. But I also work with other athletes, football players, volleyball. Their main goal is to be better at their sport, so you can utilize those concepts. They're not supposed to be a way to Two things you're looking for. Athlete performance, performance enhancement, mm -hmm. and safety. Yep. And that, if you're doing something that's going to hurt them, uh, you, you defeat the purpose of it. So your conservative, good technique, uh, you're right on the right track. Right? Absolutely. Anything yeah. else? Define parallel and squatting. For, mm -hmm. for me, parallel. it's hip joint and knee joint. Some people go top of thigh crease, I just go hip joint and knee joint, and, and God make tests to go down, because the coach, you know, the reps, unless they already done two, I stand back up, and I was only here, two, so he knows. And they know not to look at us, they know. We've had guys complain that we screwed them, and blah, blah, blah. They know they're gonna earn every rep. And some guys, we had a great uh, upper class from this, has had this winter, did not uh, test them, because he wanted to squat high, and so, you know, and then, then I'm not going to give you something you didn't earn. You're not going to get the extra yard because the ref knows your dad's brother. You know, so and we just try to teach emphasis of you will earn. And I tell them right before the test, you will earn every rep in here today. So if you train hard, it's going to be easy. It's another training. If you didn't train hard, so you're going to have problems. Come, come back, try and get that fourth rep. Just to add that real quick, one of the things that we did, Mike, was uh, we created an analysis of kind of like a horseshoe now, rod sticking up, drill a hole every, what, can't do what was it, every quarter inch? It was every quarter inch, yeah. Every quarter inch, and, and we put eye bolts in, and we struck a therapy across, you know, and so we measured, you know, the, the length of the leg with two inches below parallel, and so when we trained, we did the clipboard two inches below, but when we, when we maxed, we always had the band, they didn't touch the band in that period. You know, so it took that, that piece yeah. of the mouth where, you know, you got, you got going, you Best ever. You got, you know, he thinks he got it. Twenty guys behind him that have it for him because they're his teammates. Eliminates that. Hey, look, if it doesn't bend, it doesn't bend. No, the cap doesn't bend. You know. Right. So it's a little bit of that kind of thing too. Because you don't want to do yourself. You want to say, yeah, because I said so. But it's also you. You want to be an advocate for the kid as well. Yeah, and, that, and that's I agree that you, you're there. That you want to be successful, but the locker room war up for each other, like with, with the quickness on it. And you're, you know, we've heard of now you touch that. If he, I wanted to touch it, but he didn't, you know, so it's, anyway, I'm always learning things about trying how to get them to understand. Almost drove me crazy last 